Welcome to the Rider Read to Planet's Ransom. This is Book 1 of the Ransom Ears and Chapter 12, Plans for Retrieval. The new file was full of maps. Some made little sense to me, but others... I stared. Hey! Those I understood. They looked just like the contour maps inside the visor on the GGS. One of them showed a blue star at the foot of a cliff. I touched it. A pop-up box appeared with the words Laurie Canavis inside it. My name. They had me on a map. Are you sure this can't be hacked? As sure as I can be, and it will be deleted at the first sign of compromise. Take care of that copy. I'll update it as the pods move. I shifted the view and found another pod on the other side of the hill. David Shanahan. Tavo! I touched the icon and read the details. You didn't tell me there was someone else close by. The plan was that you met while undertaking the exploration tasks. But why Davo? Davo? Him. I touched the screen again. He has a friend he's attached to, just as you do. We have found the need to find such friends enhances cooperative behaviour and is the fastest way of building team bonds. You manipulative bunch of... Do you really feel like finishing that sentence? To be fair, my guide sounded tired. I sighed. Did they find him? No need to explain who. Not yet. Will they? Unlikely. I remembered the gouge my pod had made on landing. What about the landing? Didn't it leave a trail? There was a moment of silence, followed by an odd sound. In a human, I might have thought it was someone clearing their throat. His landing was planned by someone more experienced. You mean someone better than you? No, I mean by someone who's dealt with heritage incursions before. Someone who is paranoid enough to disobey orders by making sure no signs led directly to the pod. So why haven't I seen him then? He chose a different direction. You mean he didn't have a hundred foot drop to make his decision for him? That wasn't entirely fair and I knew it, but the voice didn't argue. That is one way to look at it. I was about to ask what other ways there were to look at it, but he kept talking. You could reach his pod by mid-morning. Mid-morning? But it looks a lot closer. The terrain is difficult and the pod well hidden. The fact is, you should be able to retrieve your... Davo and begin the search for the next closest pod. Once you are on the other side of the hill, it will be safer to camp outside. So why don't you make Davo's camp the colony base? Because your camp has the sapphirite and other natural elements to deter searches. The Shannarif and the Thorn Scorpions. But I thought we had to move away from the Shannarif. They are hunters. Eventually they will pick up your trail. Until then they will track anything that trespasses near their colony, especially after the heritage visit you had tonight. I thought on that for a long moment and then I realised something else. If you could move my pod, why can't you move the others? Some of the pods were damaged on landing. You crashed them? The computer gave a very human-like sigh. This is going to be a very long conversation if you keep interrupting. Fine. I said it with a huff of air designed to irritate any grown-up in earshot. This one chose to ignore it. Maybe it wasn't so grown-up after all. As I was saying, some of the pods were damaged on landing and only Davo's pod would have been able to reach you. The others are out of range. They had fuel to reach the original colony site, but not enough to travel beyond it. I couldn't help it. I interrupted again. And this colony site, it was in the middle, right? That is correct. I have marked it on the map, but I advise you to avoid it at all costs. The Heritage have found it? They know of it. So they did get into some files then? The colony plans were held more widely than the flight trajectories. We suspect the heritage infiltrated one of the other sections. Do you know which one? Not yet. I zoomed in the map to show the terrain around Davo's pod. The sapphirite upthrust was like an upside-down wedge pushing its way out of the ridge. 
I could see the same contours on the other side as I saw on this one, but they didn't last for long. On either side of the upthrust I saw the contour lines gradually widen, indicating a gentler slope. I was living on the steeper part of the hill where the ground dropped in a series of stepped plateaus to the edge where the stream formed a waterfall. Streamlets wound down from the west and I followed the ridge line to see it join the base of a mountain. Try as I might, I could not see any pod markers on the mountain. Did you drop one up there? I asked, touching the map. No, the terrain is too hostile. More thorn scorpions in Shannarif. And worse. Worse? We would have warned you if you'd strayed into that territory. I located the pod closest to the mountain. It rested in several ridge lines over, in a valley formed between the parallel backs of two hills. Whose is that? I wanted to ask, but I knew, was sure before I touched it, of what name would appear. Mitchell Achara. So why is he the closest to the danger zone? I asked, and heard worry edging my voice. Because he is the one most capable of dealing with the dangers there. And the one most likely to cause you trouble? But the computer did not answer my question. The heritage are not likely to find him. But he won't stay there. No, he was very determined to find you. What do you mean was? He is fine. I zoomed in on the terrain surrounding Mitch's pod. Contour lines formed a thick web, sometimes close and sometimes not so close, but I knew enough to know the terrain was even worse than what I found myself in. He can't get out of that valley, can he? There is a way. But he hasn't found it yet? I wasn't asking. I wasn't stupid. But he hasn't found it yet. I wasn't asking. I wasn't stupid. I could see just how long it would take for Mitch to find and map any way into or out of his location. He should be the last one you try to collect. Or we should translocate to his valley. The computer did not respond, so I decided to push it, just a little. What do you think? The silence inside the pod remained. I sighed and was about to ask again when the computer replied. That is a decision you will have to make, but not tonight. Finalise your route. You'll be starting early. I thought of talking back, even opened my mouth to do so, but I was sideswiped by a yawn, big enough to make my jaw crack and my eyes water. Fine, I managed through the yawn that followed and forced myself to focus. I decided to hit Mitch's pod last, which meant getting to Davos and then heading east and a bit south to pick up someone called Blossom. I figured that next bit would take me most of the day and that we could overnight with her. What do you think? I asked the computer. It looks fine, but we'll reassess in the morning. Why? Because the heritage come at night. It was a fair answer. I settled down to sleep, but sleep was a long time coming. I kept thinking I heard the whine of engines overhead, or the skitter of claws on the roof. Somewhere along the way, between deciding if I should go and check things out, and actually getting up to do so, I fell asleep. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit like. If you want to hear more, please hit subscribe. And I'll check you later. Take care out there.